when the apprenticeship first started, our uh, goal, our ask was to help fill vacancies with our wastewater operator grade fours. Um, one of the uh, driving forces for that was uh, honestly just the attrition. Um, uh, most of our wastewater operators were uh, going to age out, retire in the next 10 years. And as an organization, it was our goal and responsibility to uh, try to uh, uh, fill in that gap or that or that future gap uh, with a qualified uh, operators. Opportunity there is being a certified operator takes time. In Alabama, it's about maybe a two years um, going through the certification steps. And, uh, and thanks to uh, Margaret, uh, our uh, leadership with our director, David Dennard, and, um, and uh, Jeremy, our HR partners, uh, Ian, uh, we were able to uh, structure out a, a, a program that lasted about two years that would take someone off the street and then walk them through getting their grades two, three, and four certifications in that time frame. Uh, as a county, we were able to, uh, to um, absorb the, the uh, cost of the actual training and, and the uh, cost of the actual test themselves to um, allow our apprentices to, uh, to uh, earn an earn a income while learning. Yeah, that's exactly where I usually start off with this with everyone is it's reverse <laughs> college. You don't need to come in knowing a whole lot and we're going to pay you to learn everything. This doesn't cost you anything. Because uh, kind of like what you're saying is we're, people are retiring out, we're losing people for uh, various reasons. There's a national shortage of wastewater operators. We got to find them somewhere. So let's just go ahead and create them. And try to get, the, especially the younger folks, a lot more interested in the, in the uh in the field and bring them in. How do you, how do you find your recruits? Well, one of the ways uh, we really we really attacked this was first uh, leverage who we had in house. It's very easy to sell this industry to buy by using someone who who's already in it. The uh, second thing we did uh, we uh, started a high school internship where where we would go to all of our local high schools in our county and actually uh, tell those students, hey, we will pay you if you come and just be a intern in our wastewater plants. Uh, one that gave them great opportunity to try to see what we do on a daily basis. Uh, it's a great um, recruiting base because many students nowadays are very cost sensitive to, to the cost of college. And our pitch was always, hey, we're going to help you be a certified operator. So, uh, so, so our pitch for uh, many of our students was that, and uh, we've had a lot of success getting students just to come walk through, see, see what a, a plant looks like. Uh, once we get them in house, then, um, then uh, Jeremy does his thing and he's excellent and like training and uh, making the material very, very uh, realistic so that uh, they can be successful passing out uh, those exams. When you um, would go to the high school, what kind of interest do you get? Yeah, it's about taking what they're already interested in and being able to show them how that relates to wastewater. Uh, for example, I had someone, he was really interested in um, chemistry. And he's like, oh, I really want to be a chemist. I want to work for a medical company. And I'm like, dude, most of what we do involves chemistry somewhere along the line. And you can go through, we've got the labs, we've got treatment process, not treatment, um, well, treatment processes, but throughout the whole process, we're testing everything with chemistry and being able to kind of meet them where they're at instead of trying to force them on a, you know, well, I want to be a cosmetology student. It's like, well, not a whole lot there we can help you out with, but if there's something we can kind of make that connection just meeting them where they're at in the, in the middle. As, as you started this program, was, was the goal primarily to just replace your retiring workforce, or were you also looking to diversify your workforce? Absolutely. Uh, uh, I think here, 
same opportunities as everyone else. What uh, we did is specifically with the internships, uh, we targeted schools that were heavily racially diverse uh, first. I think for many of those schools in our local area, they never even heard of the opportunity. And I think that was very, very important. Uh, second thing was uh, we were intentional about partnering with the my career tech coaches who can help us identify real uh, candidates who may be a good fit. And I think the uh, third and probably the most valuable piece was once you have diverse candidates interested to actually get them to a plan. So what we did was we would work with the high schools and those tech coaches and like they would uh, get the uh, get school buses and and they would actually bring these students to a plant locally to just let them see it. Uh, we would do the actual uh, plant tour and I think that would help a, a lot of the uh, anxiety around, hey, is it gonna be smelly? Is it gonna be dirty? And you see plant managers uh, and like, khakis and Apollos and they're clean like hey it's not that dirty it's a lot more automated a lot more um uh, science and math than it is actual physical labor uh i think that really really helped but uh as far as the diversity piece it's about uh in, ensuring that all those groups ladies african-americans uh actually know about the opportunity uh, because uh, for uh, many of those groups, they just have never even uh, uh, known about it. Can one of you give some more statistics about what your um, actually accomplishments have been? How many people have brought in? How many have stayed with it and become full-time <laughs> employees? And 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 sort of what what comes next? Um, the the retention metrics. Like we've hired fifty nine um, apprentices over the how many years? Now, just to add to that, um, we do have like another group starting next week. There'll be a few more coming in. But overall, the, the pass rate has been pretty successful. We've had, um, we're, we're showing a, a currently 63% pass rate on the grade two. Um, there, that, that was, uh, there's been 29 employees pass a grade two exam. In the state of Alabama, we focus on grade two, grade three, grade four. Uh, grade four is the highest. Um, the grade three exam, we've had, uh, as of October, there was 10 that passed with about a 42% passing rate. And then we've had nine pass the grade four for a 53% a uh, passing rate. Those numbers could be updated a little bit. In the past um, three weeks, we've had two uh, employees pass the grade four exam and several more pass the grade two. Um, so that's uh, those, those statistics are six or seven months old. But, um, but anyway, out of the 50, 59 that we have hired, um, and we do have people leave. We've had people take other jobs at, at other departments or they've just left the municipality. But our what we've listed as the department retention rate has been 65 percent. And an operator retention rate has been 59%. So it's not perfect, but over half the people, close to two thirds of the people, um, they're still here and, and they've got full time certified jobs. Now, it, it isn't perfect. We have had some people just decide, hey, it wasn't for me, or they've had to be let go, or, or just chose to go work somewhere else. But, but overall, it's, uh, I mean, as a, I mean, just as a, our department, I mean, we've got another 30 something, 40 something certified employees that we didn't have just five years ago. What is the reaction from people uh, within the utility who weren't brought in through this program? Has there been any friction or any issues with um, this program among your, your existing workforce? I don't think there's been friction that, that uh, per se, um, it's actually probably helped. Like we have had employees here that were not certified that may be a, a maintenance worker, a truck driver, whatever, um, not included on those statistics. Um, I know in my facility, I've had three maintenance uh, workers and one basically a skilled labor that have all become certified. Like they've, I think they see that uh, these people go through the program or these employees go through the program and they get the certification. 
and now others want to be involved and and maybe we are more committed now than we ever have been um, to get people certified um, but I, I would say there's been friction I would think it's helped us as a department as we've actually got I mean we've got 40 something certified apprentices but we've got more certified people just because of the program so it's, it's best benefit if you were to do this over again, are there some things that you would recommend to another utility that wanted to, to do this? I think the one thing for us was we, we have been talking with uh, the Alabama Office of Apprenticeship from the beginning, but we didn't, had we gotten them involved, I think a little bit earlier, I think it probably would have helped out. There's a lot of benefits out there through the Department of Labor, your, um, and then whatever your state agency that runs that. That you can start recruiting veterans, you can start you can start getting tax rates on things. There's so many tools out there. I feel, and I wasn't involved in the very beginning stage. I feel like we kind of made it on our own. It was something where we used our internal talent, and which is great. Um, there's a lot of resources out there that can help, though. I think from the training program, the the one uh, maybe weaker looking point of our last five years was was COVID. Um, when you do classes, there's something about being face to face. I mean, I can kind of look at your eyes on this this TV screen now. Um, there was a, a a year or so where we just did virtual classes, and our numbers did drop a little bit then our success rate. And um, it seems to work better if I can look you eye to eye if I'm trying to teach you something, and I can understand if somebody can get it instead of doing it virtual. But try to stick with face to face instead of virtual. In the selection process of your candidates for an apprenticeship, um, I would really, really hone in on on identifying people who have a have a aptitude and a, a passion around science and math. Um, it cuts down on the actual learning curve in the class, um, and um, I think that's one thing that I think. If we had truly focused on specifically earlier, we could have possibly identified more candidates that way. Even in the um, even in the internship piece, um, uh, speaking with um, with the uh, teachers about hey hey who are your stronger science math students? Let us speak with them and then do as Ian said, uh, uh, make the uh, learning tangible through the work that way. Uh, that could really help uh, with the picking of the right candidates for your apprenticeship or your internship. 